When we had last left the spacefarer, they traveled all around the stars, seeking out adventure, finding weird alien dudes. Some were invisible, but had a strange shimmer about them. As well, there were disgusting little green spaghetti guys. Ugh, they were crawling along the ground. And then who could forget the weird brain spider alien that was mad all the time and then they traveled out to a moon and helped miners who needed uh help with whatever bullshit they needed looking at rocks <laughs> now it was time to track down some of their miscellaneous activities and do some of that this is starfield welcome back zoop, zoop, zoop. here we are i think we check through like i said our activities of which we have one to return to the Elios Retreat, amazingly enough. Let's do it. There we are. Good. Perfect. Oh. I'm, I'm liking seeing our... our little pictures and stuff now. I'm quite enjoying it. Well, this looks cozy. I don't think we're going to find much excitement around here. Oh. Yeah, I guess, Sarah, you weren't here, huh? Who was I here with? Was it Barrett? They will have been. Well, it's still uh, very much under construction. This is, well, beautiful. Why would someone build a place like this way out here on the fringes of the settled systems? Well, Sarah, wouldn't you like to know? There's quite, uh, <laughs> Sarah, there's quite the story behind this place. You know what would be very cool is if there were multiple quests that took you back here and you could see it continually getting, like, finished and built, you know? Have our very own little raven rock. Okay, let's head on out here. Cool. Hello. This place is going to be something special someday. The security needs of a place like this, well, at least I'll never be bored. Hmm. We never got to see you out here in uh, your armor. Oh. What kind of armor is that, by the way? That looks kind of fucking neat. Okay. Sure. Well, let's go check in. You know who I miss? All this intricate work and impressive construction. It's ambitious, but still, so out of place in such a remote location. Okay, if you think so. Hello. Always good to have you back again. Well, I thought I'd check in, Sloan. Just happening through our neck of the woods, stranger? Nevin told me about your summons. Our uh, donor wasn't too hard on you, I hope. She's a surprisingly friendly person, considering her line of work. It was just a nice change of pace to be able to help you all out, help you all without anyone threatening my life. Why? Oh, we're best friends now. We'll be taking her mega yacht for a spin once it's the season. Why so much secrecy about this donor? Why so much secrecy? It's something she had asked for. She doesn't want her firm's reputation and ours to affect one another but I'm mostly just curious how things went. Hmm. Interesting. Her firm, wasn't it? It was like the CEO of, um, what do you call it, weapons? Laredo, right? Okay. <laughs> Let's lie. <laughs> oh, we're best friends now. We'll be taking her mega yacht for a spin once it's a season. Hey, I'm sure you two will have a great time. Well, thanks to your little chat, our donor's doing everything she can to upend the various roadblocks in our way. We're in the process of vetting more security, looking at some additional and more agreeable contractors. Whatever gets this place closer to becoming a reality. Opening's still a ways off, but we'd be going nowhere if you hadn't wandered in. I'm just happy I could help. 
So my master plan to get you shut down fails spectacularly. Ah, oh, well. How long do you... How long to do you think it's going to be before you can open? How long do you think it's going to be? It's hard to say for certain. We're only just now in a place where we can actually assess how long everything's going to take. But with time, we'll get there. And that's thanks to you. Well, I'm just happy I could help. That makes two of us. Thank you again, love. For you, our doors will always be open. Okay. Sure. Anything else with you? The Ellie back for supplies. Monica should be able to take care of you. So what's there to do around here? Currently, very little. But once we're open, we hope to have all manner of training and personal development courses available for our residents. Most of our staff are formerly incarcerated themselves, so we hope to be able to provide a level of service unlike any other in the galaxy. Okay, sure. So much to get done. Yeah, this is one of my, my more favorite uh, quests, like side quest sequences. Or arcs, if you will. The Elias Retreat arc. I thought it was very well thought out and handled. Okay. For the most part. Alright, let's see here. How about... Probably don't want to do that. The star parcel is screwed up. We'll never find the location of the ECS constant by looking for it. Find the distress call in the Cariboys system. Fuck it, let's do it! Oh. Okay. Well, I guess we're going to Zosma first. It's kind of a high fucking level area, though. Is there trouble out here? I don't think so. Can we check our map? Star map. Extreme environment moon. How about this? Okay. Doesn't seem like there's really any activity in the system. Got that surveyed. Huh. Yeah, no ellipses on any of these planets or moons. Okay. Sure. It's just on the way. Let's see, and then to this place, a level 65 area. I forget, what was the highest level one we had ever seen? It was like 80 or 90? 75's over here. Seventies, maybe it's seventy-five. Hmm. Yeah, shit. Maybe it is seventy-five. I could have sworn I remembered seeing like an eighty one, at least. Maybe I'm just tripping major balls. Okay. Well, let's do it. I think we can take whatever's out here. There we go. Another jump down. Repeating emergency request. Facility ah. crucible requires vital materials to crucible. sustain the mission. Transmitting the mission. coordinates on current D3. End of message. Operation Star Seed. Okay. Isn't that like a something from Transformers? Star Seed? Why is that familiar to me? Crucible. Nothing much else going on in this system. A lot of planetoids though. Sure. Looks very Earth-like. Crucible, okay. The larger a planet's axial tilt, the more the length of the day will vary during the year. 
Do they simulate years in this fucking game? Oh, shit. Okay, there we go. Man, this place is, uh... Yeah, it's incredibly Earth-like. Huh. Okay. Satellite ghost vine. Ugh. Casium. Spittin' goat weed. Damn, this goat is spittin'. Do you like that? <laughs> Fuck, I fucking loved it, honestly. <laughs> Where'd that little creature go? Gosh, are there just fucking cool ducks on this planet, or what? Sounds like cool ducks. Are they flying? Yo, where are all the cool ducks I hear? I want to see some duck aliens for sure. God, they sound so close. Are they like in the trees? Is that what's up? Oh, wait, is that one over there? No, it's a bunch of bullshit. Chlorosilanes. Hmm. Yeah, there's like no aliens out here. There's some flying... Are those the ducks? Oh, shit. Hold up. Before we go over there, I want to see if these things look like ducks. Look, this is a high-level place. I'm scared. What's that shit over there? Look at that. What the fuck is that? It's a natural? That's naturally occurring from back here? You gotta be shitting me. That does not look natural. A ghost grazer. What? What the fuck is it? Oh, it's a little dude. Damn, I can't hit it. It's a fucking ghost, for real. <laughs> Alright. Is this more of them? Uh, this is them, I see. They get, like, lodged in the ground, and that, that was the issue. Okay. God, is it coming down to fuck me? They are not cool at all. They don't look anything like a fun duck. Oh, look, here's some more freaks. Get a load of these assholes. Look at them. They look like some kind of a zerg unit. They're constantly farting. Flocking scorpion scavenger. What do you think they're scavenging for? They're wary. Yeah, they should be. Boom. A grub grazer. Okay. Got some lube from him? Okay, sure. Where, what's this thing? A grub grazer. Oh, it's kind of cute! Oh, it's kind of cute! It's kind of a cute little dude! God, let's kill it. Man, 73 XP. Okay. Honestly, I'm surprised Sarah doesn't get upset when we just start killing the local fauna. Honestly, I would kind of be, <laughs> right? If I were really in this situation, uh, I don't know. It's a little fucked up. Look at this! Sub-Zero Silkweed? I've never seen a thing like this before! It's just a big old tangle of shit. What's in there? Sealant? My god, man. Sarah, are you still trying to shoot that one fucking bird? God, I bet you are. Fuck, I'm loving the slugs. The slug rounds are so cool. Holy shit, look at them all flying around! God, look at them all go! How far can I shoot with this fucking shotgun? Hell yes, man. What all is over there? There's a different type of creature, too, I think. Uh-oh. <laughs> Pretty fucking fast. <laughs> Look out, Sarah. Uh-oh. <laughs> T 
take all their weird junk. Look at that. What the hell is that? A swarming glider. Hey, these they look like the weird fucking monster. Are they like a derivative of them? Is this is this canon that they're meant to look like that? Shit, look at all these guys. Okay. Should I be taking their loot? Or what? Do I need it? Make sure you strip everything you Cosmetic is good. Thing. Oh fuck, Sarah, I got one. Did you see that? Oh my god, okay. Cool. God, I feel like some kind of fucking asshole, right? We're, our character is just becoming a fucking asshole, <laughs> right? We're, let's just face facts. This is, this is just w what's happened. <laughs> We're working for Ryujin. We're like sacrificing our morals. Space Roach Grazer? Oh, it sounds beautiful. It sounds like music. Bring it on. God, we're fucking monsters. <laughs> okay. What is this satellite ghost run? Yeah. Look at this place. This place is kind of cool. Oh, the swarming gliders are aggressive. That shoots fast as hell. Yeah, it's these freaks. God, are there more out here trying to fuck me? Whew. Activate monster vision. And the only monster I'm seeing is Sarah Morgan. Hey! <laughs> okay. Let's head on back over, I guess. Jesus, it is beautiful here. Should I pop out the notepad <laughs> for this planet? You know what? I'm I'm doing it. This place is too nice. This is a potential place to settle down in the future if we want. Okay. We need carry Bidis system and carry Bidis 3 and what is the biome? Wetlands? You gotta be shitting me. These are wetlands? Okay. Here we are. Good. Yeah, what the fuck? I mean, I guess the trees look like they could be wetlands or, fu or fucking something like that. But it looks fairly arid to me. Okay, well. Yeah, look at this. Is this, is this, is this meant to be? No, nah, this this looks like more of a savanna, I would say. The only the only thing that belies that is is the tree. Right? Huh. Okay, let's head on over here. Past these big fun looking rocks. There we are. Right up here. Look. These creatures were not much trouble to us, so whatever this entails couldn't be too tough. And look at that big old satellite. Okay, now we're now we're looking like wetlands. This is kind of wetlands here. Look, we got a puddle. <laughs> That's wetlands. Hell yeah. Okay, there's some sort of robo lord out here. Man, it looks cool. It's called Tobias. Ho oh, there. Chilling of unknown origin detected. Designated outsider. This is an undisclosed secret location. Please identify purpose or depart. 
Oh, I was getting a distress call. I received your distress call. You're the one that sent the transmission, pal. What exactly is this place? What is this secret place? Outsider is not part of plan. Anything Capital P worth. plan. You're the one that sent the transmission, pal. Acknowledging receipt of emergency request. Explanation deemed acceptable. Clearance granted to Crucible. Outsider will deliver 150 units of copper. Compensation will be dispensed. Tobias, stand down. We have a visitor. Reminder, deliver Is this a ghost I'm hearing? End of conversation. This, this is incredible. For so long we hoped for any... Are they behind you? And the day has finally arrived. Where is Ada coming from? <laughs> is, I don't know. Is this supposed to... Am I not supposed to be able to see Ada or... Or is this a bug? I don't, <laughs> I don't know if this is intentional or not. Now this is a better reception. Uh, your robot needs to learn some manners. Caribdis is really out of the way. You must not see many people. What is this place? Oh dear. That's a surprisingly tricky question. Are you I'm in probably there? not the person to answer it, but it is a genuine pleasure to meet you. Oh my god, I see her. I see this person who's talking. Look, right there, inside of this. <laughs> She's peeking out like uh, Mr. Wilson, the neighbor off of Home Improvement. Do you know? What I'm <laughs> She's like peeking up over the fence. We can't see the rest of her. <laughs> <laughs> She's like Mr. Wilson. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, you, this place is really out of the way. You must not see many people. We see no one, ever. Your oh. arrival is truly an historic one, but many fear what it portends. The societies what? have closed their doors and are arguing about what to do, while the rest hide to see which way the wind blows. Franklin would know what to do. He's the oldest among us. You should talk with him. Okay. I'll go look for Franklin then. Why are people hiding? Are you meant to be hiding or is this just a weird situation that's going on? Why are people hiding? Crucible is a tinderbox and any spark will set it off. We're still recovering from a deadly conflict that happened three years ago. Far fewer of us are here to greet you today because of it. Oh dear. Well, what do you mean by societies with a capital S? Most of us are like me free and unaligned, but there are three societies that are oft at odds with one another. The Believers, the Pragmatists, and the Renegades. It would be wise to meet each of them. Franklin leads the Pragmatists. Okay, I'll go look for Franklin then. Give it time, and I'm sure the others will come out, for curiosity's sake if nothing else. Okay. Hey! <laughs> hey there! I still can't get over you. A visitor! Extraordinary. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Or I guess we should stay the course, huh? Sure. Oh. Little fun facility robot there. Hey there. Franklin? Wow. Okay. Ugh. Ugh. What's going on with this? Huh. Okay, let's talk to you first. When your ship landed, I feared the robots would shoot you on sight. I am greatly relieved that they let you enter our community. But you come during a delicate time. Everyone will seek to use your arrival to further their own ends. Oh my gosh, who's your voice actor? This is like completely new VO or something. I'll be careful then. That's a weird old time outfit and your accent is odd. You don't control the robots? You don't seek to use me? You don't control the robots? No, we most certainly do not. Our relationship with them is a matter of some debate. And you don't seek to use me? You ask a question you already know the answer to. Yes, of course. I have need of you. But if you have a good heart and a quick mind, I am sure you will see my point of view. <laughs> what? Okay, that's a weird old time outfit you got. And your accent is odd. Where to begin? Ah, 
maybe an introduction? I am Franklin Delano Roosevelt, leader of the Pragmatist Society. What? Whoa, Professor, there was an American president named Franklin D. Roosevelt. Is this guy a clone? Look, we know cloning exists in this world. Is this guy a clone? Are each of these fucking three places, like, led by some kind of clone? Roosevelt. I know I've heard that name before. You have an odd name. Professor Check, baby. There is an American president named Franklin D. Roosevelt. Does he look kind of like Franklin D. Roosevelt? I don't know, like, exactly what he looked like off the top of my head. I think he does, right? He kind of looks like Franklin D. Roosevelt, I think. Right? I'd have to bring up a picture of him. Like, I I don't just know what he looked like off the top of my fucking head, but I, I think it's right. Okay. He was president during, like, the 30s or 40s, too, huh? I guess the, the like, outfit and the, the accent kind of fits, right? You know your history, then. I am, in a sense, President Roosevelt. Everyone that lives here are clones. I fucking knew it. Some of us are clones of the greatest figures of history, and others, well, we don't rightly know. How'd they clone you when all? From, die, from what? And some of us die quite often. We are brought back. What? I cannot imagine how strange this must sound to an outsider. Okay. Sure. God, there's so much wrong with his if he's meant to be franklin uh, d roosevelt there's so much all right listen i'm a little bit into menswear i'm not like a super expert but i'm i'm pretty decent at it there's there's some issues here with with the the look of his outfit right Correct me if I'm wrong, but Franklin D. Roosevelt... All right, we'll, we'll get into this later after we can, like, fully look around his, his, like, model. All of this is hard to believe. I've encountered stranger things. I want to know who you people are and what's going on. I so, do have a society to manage. So you are a real president of the old United States of America? Are you a mortal, then? Are you a real president? Now, there is the question, isn't it? I do not have FDR's memories, but I know every nuance of his life and times. Well, it's as much as history records. I confess, I, I feel an undeniable affinity towards him. But no, I, I am my own man, but not all of us see it that way. It's, it, I, it's also like, like, to clone Franklin D. Roosevelt specifically, did they get rid of, like, a lot of his, like, physical ailments that really, like, fucked him over in life? Because otherwise, that seems kind of hellish to clone someone knowing that they will go through the same hell, right, later on in their life. Franklin D. Roosevelt, um, I forget exactly what it was. Was it polio? He he had like uh he was he was one of the better United States presidents, I believe. Right? Like I said, I'm not super duper um clued in on history I and all of that. I believe he, he had like big involvement in pushing forward like pro union stuff, right? He did a whole bunch of shit with that. He was he was he's generally, like I said, one of the better uh presidents in the last like hundred years. I'm pretty sure he was 1930s 40s era right but also integral to him was as he got older he had like these really horrible physical ailments that uh, beset him right he was essentially had to like work and and live from a wheelchair uh, in the latter years of his life because it was so rough right for as as cool of a guy as I believe he was like, there was hellish stuff that he had to endure. Uh, are you immortal? I do have a society to manage. Are you immortal? Not at all. I have had occasion to see death more than anyone. When someone dies, all they have accomplished here in Crucible, all of their deeds, thoughts, are gone. And when they come back, they are different. 
modified. The believers say they are improved. Being what? born can take years, sometimes over a decade. But everyone comes back. Are you reborn like this? Or, like, do you come back as a child? Huh. A decade as well. How many cycles have there been? How long have y'all been out here? Huh. I want to know who you people are and what's going on. I could see how confusing this may be. Even frustrating. But if it's any consolation, many of us feel the same. And we live here. <laughs> After decades, centuries... Of trying to figure it out ourselves, there is so very much we don't know either. The robots clone us for a reason, their so-called mission. But what that is, and what we should do about it, is something the societies disagree about. Sometimes violently. Mm. It's best you meet with the other societies, and after. I promise I'll explain the pragmatist's position on matters. I'm surprised no one else has ever, like, come out here. I can't wait to see who I get to meet next. I'll hold you to that promise, Franklin. I don't want to be passed off to the others. I want answers now. What can you tell me about the mission? Well, it is one of the few concrete things we know about Crucible. If you want to truly know about the mission, the Believers will tell you all about it. In fact, it can be hard to get them to stop talking about it. After you meet with them, I'll share my position. Okay. Well, I'll hold you to that promise, Franklin. Hmm. Please do. Word has been sent, so the street should be full again. There is more I would talk with you about, but I would not take advantage of your ignorance. Go speak with the Monirinus and Genghis Khan. Okay. Man, you know what? Okay. <laughs> Look, it's time to spend the rest of the video talking about this. <laughs> I, hope, I hope you're fucking ready. Buckle, strap in and buckle up, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I remember seeing this guy in one of the pre-release trailers and stuff. And I remember remarking on this, this one specific fact. But I didn't even get to see the entirety of what was going on here. Right, but... So... Just as a starter, like I said, I believe Franklin D. Roosevelt was president during... And I'm pretty sure this is like his likeness during his his pres presidency. Uh, but I'm pretty sure he was president during... Some of the turrets are failing. Oh. I know Amon Arenas and the Believers are fixing them. You're free to assist them. But if they all fail... Then we will most likely die. All of us. Is that what you want to hear? Is that all you have to say? That's why our aims are so important. We need to learn how to do things for ourselves. How to defend, how to produce power, how to fix the plumbing, for God's sake. The pragmatists are the only ones who see Crucible for what it really is. Huh. Okay, but, um, yeah. So, 30s to 40s, at least in the United States, but I think, I think generally within the Western world, generally is regarded as like the golden age of menswear right among menswear aficionados it is generally referred to as like the golden age of menswear because there were a whole lot of new styles coming into uh being and people were like playing around with like what we refer to as like the classic tailoring look and stuff and sort of uh, having new designs and people were just like wearing it kind of casually right just wearing it around and of course there was also stuff like the great depression so a lot of this was kind of like maintained within like um especially as you were in and like leaving the great depression eras or like years a lot of this was granted like maintained as sort of like uh wealthier people in society who could have like 
endured it. Granted, you know, poorer folks still had like hand-me-downs and shit like that in, in different ways, right? As times were so tough. But regardless, uh, this guy would have been, you know, president during the golden age of menswear. First and foremost, I just gotta say, there's some issues here with the fit. There's a few things that are kind of good, but there's quite a lot that is pretty fucking rough. <laughs> so, immediately, and this is why I commented on way back when the pre-release shit first came out. Here, you know what? That way we don't get any interruptions. Let's go photo mode on this. Okay. Here, let's, let's have him look a little bit more flattering. Okay, perfect. So, here... <laughs> Are you liking this? All right, so here, here let's let's pump in the the field of view. This is prime suspect number one immediately, right? I believe in the thirties and forties, right? By by this point, uh, it would generally be accepted that this rule holds true. Generally speaking. In any jacket, whether it be a three-button jacket, which is a little bit older, usually newer newer jackets, and like whether it be suit jacket or like a sport jacket or something like that, anytime you have a tailored jacket, you do not button the bottom button. You don't do that, right? It is considered a fashion faux pas. I I believe it was like King Henry the Eighth or something. Um, there's like this weird story or whatever where like uh, he got too big of a, a gut or something and he couldn't bot button the bottom one. And then so everyone else sort of mimicked that and chose and also elected not to button the bottom one because um, they were like following suit with the king or something like that. Uh, but regardless of where it originally came from, which I, I don't really know the validity of that. That's just always a story that people say and spread around. You're not meant to. I believe at this point in time, this dude would not have done this, right? And also, very interestingly, is that this is a two-button suit, right? Like I said, of the era, it's far more expected that there would have been a th it would have been a three-button suit. I don't know. Maybe you could go back at right. Like I said, I don't know Franklin D. Roosevelt off the top of my head, and this was the golden age of menswear when this could have been introduced. Right, and starting to become more commonplace, a two-button closure. But normally, I would have expected, like, of this era, a three-button front closure, right? But nonetheless, regardless of whatever is common and what he was wearing at the time, having the bottom one buttoned, major faux pas. Pro Fashion pro tip here, if you're ever wearing, like, uh, tailored clothing, or, like, you're just getting into it because you enjoy the look of it, or you got to wear it for like you're going to a wedding or funeral or something like that. You got to dress up. In in modern day, there is not a single suit or sport jacket that is made to have the bot the bottom button closed and buttoned up. So don't ever do it. Major fashion faux pas. Uh, it's not a big deal if you do it, but anyone who knows their shit will see and they'll be like, oh, this person doesn't know what's going on. So just secret pro tip, don't do it. Now, what is kind of fascinating here is it seems like they really... Well, no, I don't know. Hmm. No, well... It's close. It's close. Normally what you try to do on... Well, no, I don't think so. I would assume that the president would have had like a higher end suit at the time and would have like pattern matching on his pinstripes here but there is not any of that granted i think sometimes when you do it in games and whatnot it feels a little too nice right certainly i've seen it in like cartoons and um like animated or animated cartoons or comic books and stuff wherein you do have proper pattern matching on like tailored clothing and it looks weird and bad but I feel like in 3D rendering with a 3D model, that's probably okay, right? But otherwise, there's there's a lot of weird things going on, and I think it has to do with Starfield's like custom system, right here. Let's try and get him looking directly 
straight as well because you can see it's kind of bending out of shape a bit. There we go. Okay, perfect. Huh. Yeah. So, generally speaking, it's decently proportioned, right? I mean, if anything, maybe... Let's see, where's his fucking ass at? Yeah, okay. I think his jacket is maybe a little bit too short for the time, right? Ideally. Ideally. The... the ta a tailored jacket should cover your ass, right? And maybe this is hard to tell just here from the game perspective, right? Uh, generally speaking, most people agree it should cover your ass. Um, and then you're good. Generally speaking as well, one of the main rules is like when you bend up, you like curl your hands into a fist. Um, you should be able to touch the end of your jacket, which here it looks... I'm, I'm having a hard time to tell. I think maybe it is appropriate length, actually, right? There's some odd stuff about this. It's got to be said. So here as well, you see the, the shirt poking out from underneath the cuffs? That's actually pretty good, right? That's like a really good amount of cuffs showing. In fact, can we clip through there and see his shirt? No. Okay, there's not another layer to that. That's pretty good. Right, that's good attention to details. Whoever did this knew what the fuck they were doing. Right, it ends an appropriate length. Looks good. One of the weird things as well about this this suit, though. These are, like, I assume they're meant to be, like, brass buttons. But they're metal buttons anyway. Very, a, a much, a bit more of a casual flair for a very formal suit. Right, a dark pinstripe generally regard as one of the more formal pattern suits that you can possibly get, right? A dark pinstripe. And it's also one of the reasons why I don't actually like wearing pinstripe uh, jackets whatsoever because they are so formal. But normally you would not have brass buttons on this, right? Maybe this is like a weird affectation of uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt himself where he preferred that. I'm not sure. Uh, another cool thing, though, here, this is actually something pretty dope. And once again, this is a bit of a weird affectation for, like I said, an otherwise very formal suit. A three-button sleeve. That is a little wild. Uh, normally, you go with four buttons kissing, right, to where there, there's like a slight touch or even overlap on them uh, for a more formal suit. Maybe even more buttons at the time uh, in the 30s or 40s. But I don't think so. Usually, the three-button not-kissing configuration is meant for a more casual style, right? This is actually my favorite style, um, is the three buttons not-kissing. It is actually my absolute favorite kind. Uh, but, like I said, it seems a little odd on an otherwise very formal suit, right? Huh. It's, it's also sort of a... Him being an American president, it's also sort of like a staple of American style. It's like uh, it really m leans into like the American traditional or American Ivy style. Having the three button as well, it would it would go my like as well. My personal favorite would be like a three button front closure. But the top is like a three roll two, which means that the top button is also never buttoned. Uh, generally speaking, for the front closures, there's like uh, there's a rule that's called sometimes always never. Right, which covers pretty much all your bases for any um, contemporary or even mo the vast majority, like 98% of all vintage clothes that you will find, tailored clothes, where it's sometimes you close the top one, always the middle, and never the bottom, right? Uh, this, of course, is if you are deciding to close it, right? Of course, you can choose not to close it and leave it hang open if you want more of a casual, laid-back a sort of vibe, or if you're sitting down, generally you unbutton it and then rebutton it as you sit and stand if you want to maintain formality, right? But um, I generally like the three roll twos myself. Uh, but like I said, kind of surprising that he's not wearing a three button suit wherein you would button the top one because that was more of the norm of the era. Like I said, though, golden age of menswear, maybe things were being changed up. Um, otherwise, 
a lot of the shit that makes this look very weird, right? Because just looking at it, you can kind of tell it's a little strange. A lot of it, I think, is due to part and parcel the fact that th this is like a clothing item and not part of the character model, right? Like they, they, what this dude is wearing is part of Starfield's clothing system. If anything, I wouldn't be surprised if like you could duplicate this outfit in like the game's files and like wear it on anyone because of the way in which this is morphed. We were talking about this a little bit in our, um, uh, Dragon's Dogma 2 playthrough, but sort of the way in which the clothing drapes on someone. So here we see just like weirdly major collar gap between the neck and the shirt collar here, which is a massive like issue. Uh, normally though, it is on the tailored jacket and your shirt collar, not your shirt collar and your neck, right? Generally speaking, you want on your neck there to, you, you should be able to fit um, two fingers between the shirt collar and your neck. Uh, but very obviously, because there's so much slack all around it, like just sitting here, it looks like he could fit two fingers right there and right there and right there, right? Like he could fit probably his entire wrist in there, right? It is way too big for his neck. And I think that is to accommodate sort of the game mechanic system wherein it looks a certain way on your character's body. That said, how does mine... Oh, look, yeah. Because I've got this band collar that is meant to be elevated off. They get around it. They very sneakily get around it because I have this, like, band collar that pops off of the neck and isn't meant to fit very neatly. What about Sarah, though? Doesn't her, like... Yeah. This actually leans up against her, her like, person. See, he should have the same thing here rather than, like, standing off like that. That's a major weird issue. Another weird issue, though, with this um, is his, his collar itself is very weirdly shaped, right? So, in, in like, the golden age of menswear, right, um, sort of, you get these larger collars, right? Uh, I believe if I had to guess, this is meant to be like a spear point collar, right? Very popular in that era and um, like menswear aficionados when they get into like formal wear and stuff, very much still do today enjoy a spear point collar. Um, any, any buy into this like classic menswear bullshit, you ask them like about, oh, do you like small collars? Almost all of us will say, fuck no, small collars are like the fucking devil, right? Which is unfortunate because they're, they've never been more popular, right? Uh, like little tiny piddly two inch collars. Ugh, disgusting, gross, fucking get it away from me. It's horrible. I don't want it. Uh, but in this case, this is meant to be, I think, like a nice, majestic looking uh, spear point collar here, right? which they got the length of it right, but it's it's outward too much here, right? It should be, like I said, more spear point. And I think that's that has to do, that may be part and parcel of the issue with like it draping on him. I'm not sure, right? But it should be like cut more like that, right? Kind of right there. Like if we we sort of align with my, my top left, um, intersection on my my little whatever here. Or actually, do I have something else I can lay down on this? Let's see. Frame. Oh my god. Okay. Is there something that just like puts some shit there? Uh. <laughs> I've never done any of this. Okay. Branded? Oh, I see. Okay, here. See the Starfield <laughs> logo on the top left? Alright, see... Uh, kind of see where the circle is on the right side, the right side of the circle. It should kind of, like, be like that. Like, that that leftmost part should be kind of shaved, right? Just roughly gesturing it. Because it's meant to be very sharp, right? To sort of accentuate that, like, V shape, which is what you go for a lot 
in this sort of tailored clothing. But here, it looks very weird. It looks very much like, I don't know, turtle-esque, right? It is not draping right whatsoever. And like I said, I think a lot of it is sourced from the neck area here. Uh, once again, pointing with the Starfield logo. But a lot of it is sourced, and, pro and the problems draw from the way in which it drapes on his body. So it seems very odd. And generally, like I said, with a lot of collars, uh, the tip here, it kind of tapers off as you move from, like, the point, the collar point, right? Even, um, even contemporary ones, generally, it tapers off. And that way, for the part that loops around behind you and all of that, it's always a little bit shorter, right? But spear point collars would be really long, uh, like this. Probably, like, I don't know, four inches or so. Uh, probably m potentially even more depending on who 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 is wearing it or whatever or what style they prefer right I mean we're talking like 30s 40s I'm I'm been pretty fucking long probably four is is a little conservative right we'd probably be pumping that shit up to like 4.5 five inch uh collar points right I could see that uh regardless generally right like like I said long collars love them uh, for myself, I, I tend to prefer either a 3.5 or a 4 uh, inch collar point uh, for a button down collar. That's my preference. I've, I've come to really enjoy like a 4 incher though, right? I've started getting some 4 inchers. Man, I'm, I'm enjoying them, right? There's a nice collar roll to them because uh, I do have a preference for button down collars because they're a little bit more, uh, they're the more casual sort of collar, right? Anyway, anyway, uh, collar roll is neither here nor there. Uh, as we can see, this, I think it's it's meant to be, like I said, a spear point collar, but it's done not quite right. Another point, right? I think this is meant to look, right, almost like this is an ideal sort of suit, especially if he's looking toward you, because like we had seen when he's looking the other way, looking away from uh, where his body is facing, it kind of warps in a strange way, right? Uh, because of how clothing and stuff drapes on the character model, you know? Um, but generally speaking, and I would bet, I would bet fucking money on this. If Franklin D. Roosevelt, guy living in the thirties and forties, wealthy, a president, uh, he would have a proper collar situation here, right? Generally speaking, right? If, especially if you have like a spear point or a spread collar or a cutaway collar like this, um, there's a few collars in which you don't want this, like, for example, a button-down collar, because it is more casual. But, like I said, spread collars, spear point collars, uh, you would want, when you're laying in an ideal, when you're standing upright in an ideal position, you would have it to where the collar point of your shirt should either just touch the edge of your jacket lapel or just go underneath it by a little teensy bit, right? You shouldn't actually be able to see the end, the tip of your collar, right? And I would bet you, if you looked up a picture of Franklin D. Roosevelt, he 100% has that going on, whether or not he's wearing spear point collars, which I bet he would be, right? I 100% bet he would be. Another cool detail here, though, which I do appreciate, is it looks as if he is wearing an asymmetrical not on his necktie. He is wearing a foreign hand, which is generally preferred, um, historically speaking, by most Americans, right? This is a very, very much like an Americanism, a very American tie knot, right? The foreign hand is my also personal favorite. It is super simple to, to do as well. It's probably one of the easier ones. And it has this nice sort of asymmetrical flair to it. Uh, whoever made the model, they had very nice attention to detail here. They got the, the dimple in the tie knot as well. And you can very clearly see it's asymmetrical. It kind of tilts a little bit. You can see a bit of the, the necktie over there, right? That's super duper good. Uh, the weirdest part, like I said, is there's just something... I can't even quite imagine what it is. Using, once again, the Starfield logo here. I can't even tell exactly what it is at the collar. But it seems like it's meant to be a spear point collar. But there's just something not quite right about it, right? Like, it's it's got too much over here. Like, it gives the illusion as if, like, the entirety of it is as long as the collar point, when that should not be the case, right? 
and maybe like i said a lot of that stems from how it it like the clothes don't naturally drape over the character model similar to like like it should it should be as close to his neck as sarah's t-shirt is right but it shouldn't be tight to where you look like a pressed sausage or whatever right it should be comfortable but uh snug like i said you should be able to if you put your hands up there should be able to nicely get two fingers in there and uh not be like strangling yourself right there's a nice balance to it uh but here it's it's like all kinds of weird and messed up one, one of the interesting things though as well is they don't give him a collar gap between his collar and his jacket lapel right which is ideal and that is a problem that a lot of people uh have wrong with their jackets and stuff right um you even see people who spend a ton of money and get like custom shit uh who have this issue where there's a major collar gap when they're like standing upright and there's a gap like a significant noticeable gap between their shirt collar and their jacket lapel massive problem um ideally you only ever have that if you're like going second hand or something or you got something really cheap uh but shit even i feel like even i managed to uh in being mo like almost predominantly a second hand clothes shopper even i don't really have the <laughs> not to fucking brag <laughs> But even I don't have the sort of collar gap there. But very nice to see um, no collar gap here. Uh, another cool detail, right? Like on the lapels, there is pattern matching. There is very clearly pattern matching. This is really nice, right? I'm surprised that they didn't follow. S they didn't follow suit here in the pockets, right? The flapped pockets, for whatever reason, do not have pattern matching, right? And as well. The pattern matching ain't great on his sleeves, right? But here on the lapels, it's perfect, right? Which, I don't know, maybe they just didn't think anyone would be a fucked up guy and notice <laughs> what was going on with, like, the, uh, the pocket, uh, the, the breast pocket here. Or the, um, god, what, is that what you call that? I think that's what you call that. Your pocket square pocket. <laughs> uh, but, uh, certainly down here, the flapped ones... It's a fucking mess. But up here on the lapels, it's perfection, right? Very good. It's it's remarkable, right? Which, of course, you know, it's a 3D model. Of course, it's going to be easy. It's not like handcrafted or, or even with a machine or whatever, right? <laughs> like significantly easier to do it inside of a video game. Uh, the main issue that you run into is trying to have it to where this isn't modeled on this specific character and instead is like an, an equipable item, an outfit right um uh, which is how you get this uh horrifying sort of gap between his neck and his shirt collar right and then everything else just kind of horrifyingly falls into place uh cool cool other little tidbit here his gosh i forget what this is called there's like an italian name for it but the way in which his like buttonholes or his lapel uh his lapel hole or fuck, what, what do you call it? Uh, but his his buttonholes here, right? They have this extra bit of fabric that is sewn on and embroidered on, or so to speak, that gives it like a little bit of extra depth. That's normally like, especially of this time period, like I said, I think 30s or 40s, um, very, very high-end shit, right? Because you have to do this completely by hand. Right, I think even today, in order to do it right, you still have to do it by hand because there's no like machine that properly does it because there's so many other factors in place. I think you still have to do it by hand. I'm not sure, but he's got it there. He's got it um, on these front buttons. Really good shit. If anything, I'm a little surprised that he ain't got it like functioning surgeon cuffs on his sleeve. But that said, having non-functioning sleeves is super duper American. And I'm assuming this is like, okay, <laughs> this is getting really wild as if this wasn't wild enough already. Um, this, th I would assume him being a United States president generally in the past, almost every single president had their clothing made by Brooks brothers who famously did a whole lot of, like, machine work, right? They actually weren't super high-end, right? They were on the higher middle end and still kind of are to this day, 
right? They still exist. They're a 200 plus years old clothing company. Uh, not quite what they used to be, but they still do exist. Um, but I would assume the reason why he doesn't have functioning cuffs here is because of that, because this is uh, like a bit more of a mass produced one, right? Granted, probably from one of their higher lines, but I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure what they actually did for presidents, right? Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe they did do custom stuff because I know for like way back when for Abraham Lincoln, they made him like a custom jacket, the same jacket that he was shot in. Right. And they still have it. Uh, but it was custom done for him, of course, because uh, Abraham Lincoln famously had some wild proportions, especially for that time. Now, also an odd affectation about this, and maybe this was hard for them to research, is that he has a double vent on the back of it, it seems. Right. He has these side vents here, the double vent on the back of his jacket, you know, which is ideal for, man, look at Sarah's ass. Holy shit. Oh my God. Sarah's packing some fucking heat. What the fuck? I never noticed that. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Damn, that's what, check out my wife. <laughs> but, uh, interesting thing here is, like I said, the two vents on the back of the jacket. Of course, that's for mobility. Better if you sit down, right? A lot of contemporary ones do use the two vent configuration. Like I said, it's a lot, generally uh, speaking, a lot of people think it's a lot better for like sitting down and all of that. But I'm pretty sure of the era, he would have had a single back vent. And certainly that's like the traditional American move is to have a single back vent, right? So a little bit wild. Uh, down here, he's got the trowel cuffed, which, you know, fair enough. Uh, the size of it, the the width of it, perfect. Uh, probably, I don't know, maybe this is an affectation specific to uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt. Like I said, he had some medical issues that he ran into later in, in his later years and whatnot, wherein he ended up in a wheelchair. And I, I forget what it was that he ran into, right? What he got. It was really horrible and tragic. Um, like I said, dude was in a lot of pain. Uh, speaking of which, another president who did have... Um, also similar, well, I don't know similar, but he did have like physical ailments, um, while he was still alive before his assass assassination, uh, John F. Kennedy, uh, and he famously actually, although he was like a big, uh, icon of his, for his style and such, um, he famously wore a lot of his, uh, suit jackets and, and sport coats with both of them buttoned, especially, um, in the later years of his life because he was also getting like physical ailments and stuff, unfortunately, um, as he aged up, I forgot what they were, but it was something to do with like his spinal column and back. And he used underneath, he, he had like, I believe it, it was, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe John F. Kennedy, uh, he also had like a whole bunch of, um, he had like an excruciating pain a lot of the time in those later years as, as like his debilitation worsened. Uh, but he, I believe famously wore his jackets with both buttoned up, which you're not supposed to do, but he did it because underneath of his, of his tailoring, he would wear like a back brace or whatever to try and help with the pain. Right. So he did that that way whenever, uh, it, cause of course, if you had the bomb one, occasionally, depending on how you move, you would see part of the, like, um, the, the mechanical nature or whatever of his brace that he wore. Right. And he did not want to, of course, cause you know, uh, presidents are incredibly scrutinized on their um, well-being and, and appearance and whatnot, right? Um, which uh, some would argue he even won against Nixon for. So, sorry, I don't know much about history. <laughs> I know some weird shit. I know some weird shit. Not anything important. I can tell you sometimes, always, never. I can say, oh, yeah, this the, the cuff is pants seem very appropriate, right? Uh, I love as well, uh, great detail. They are creased. Of course they would be creased. This is a very formal suit. Um, he's got, it looks like, yeah, uh, black Oxford cap toes, very formal type. I would say, though, even more attention to detail here I'll do. Uh, so in, these are Oxford shoes, which a lot of people don't fully know what Oxfords are. Even places that sell shoes don't seem to always fucking know, and it drives me up a fucking wall. If I can just rant a little bit about that, sometimes I'm looking for shoes, and I get it. If you're a regular person selling shoes on, like, eBay or some shit, 
Who gives a shit? It's okay if you don't know. You're not a gigantic corporation that should know better, that literally specializes in selling shoes, right? If you're a company selling that, do better, right? Fucking keep up. Get your shit together. You're a fucking mess. <laughs> but um, in some cases, I see companies and stuff like label their like derbies or bluecher shoes and shit as being Oxfords. Just any kind of formal dress shoe they label as Oxfords. That is not the fucking case, friendo. Uh, these, I believe, should be Oxfords. But the issue is, so an Oxford means it has like a closed lacing system. Uh, otherwise, the other popular uh, option would be like uh, derbies, or I think in Europe, I've heard Europeans refer to them as darbies, right? But it is spelled like derby, D-E-R-B, um, or bluchers. I've heard people refer to them as bluchers as well. There's a small distinction between them, but I could never fucking tell the distinction between them. I think people are just fucking around. Right, saying that this shit's a blucher when it's blucher and derby may as well be interchangeable. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. That's that's deep cuts of menswear uh, feuding, <laughs> of which there is a lot. Uh, but uh, uh, here, you can see the closed lacing system, which is iconic for the Oxford, right? And is part and parcel what makes it the most formal type of shoe. Um, here, though, right, you can see... I, f I forget what, what you call this part of the shoe. I'm less... I know less about the anatomy of a shoe. I'll give you that. But you can see this is where the two like le pieces of leather would come together. At the bottom here, even if you have a wider foot and it fits oddly, the design of the shoe should be such to where right here, these two pieces where I'm kind of pointing with um, this intersection on the left or here, I'll point with the D in Starfield right there and right there. They should come together at kind of like a V, right? At the very least, even if you have a very wide fit on your shoe, they should come together at a V. So not quite perfect. Uh, but otherwise, I do love that they put them in black cap toe Oxfords. Generally speaking, regarded as the absolute most formal, iconic menswear sort of shoe other than like patent leather if you're wearing like black or white tie or whatever the fuck, right? A certain kind of tuxedo. But certainly for this outfit, this is absolutely perfect. Right, a black cap toe Oxford. A lot of people will say like, "Oh, you, this is what you need to have," or whatever. If you, if ever you need to go to a formal event in this day and age, I think only menswear weirdos like me would fucking know. Right? I think regular people will mind if you wear brown shoes. Right? Uh, but this is generally like the most formal that you can get without going into like super shiny patent leather. Right? But otherwise, super good. Uh, he has the cuff trowel. I don't know if that was, like, iconic for him at the time. Generally speaking, a cuff trowel is less formal than having, like, a non-cuffed hem, right? Which is surprising because, like I said earlier, uh, similar with the brass buttons in the three-button rather than four-kissing configuration here, uh, it's a little bit at odds. Same here with the cuff trowel, which is generally... A bit more of a casual affectation on tailoring uh generally you would not have it cuffed if you want it to come off as more casual you would cuff it right but that seems at odds with the fact that it is pinstripe and like i said a dark pinstripe suit is probably the most formal pattern you can possibly get right i would even argue that a dark pinstripe suit is more formal than just a plain dark suit right than just like plain charcoal gray or dark navy, right? I would argue that's the case. But I, I think there are there are others who would argue otherwise, right? But I, I don't know. For me, pinstripe is just incredibly formal. Uh, but otherwise, the length of them probably could do with being hemmed a little bit lower. Because look, he's got so much extra fabric puddling. Uh, I would guess he was probably a tall guy because most presidents are and were. Um, so you could easily go for like a full break, which means there's one dent in your trowel when you're standing upright, right? So I don't know. But like I said, Franklin D. Roosevelt is a special unique case wherein he ended up getting, like I said, um, some horrendous physical debilitations as he got older, right? Um, so I don't know. Maybe this is meant to be a nod toward that, right? in knowing that, yeah, at one point, maybe he needed the extra flexibility or whatever, or he was sitting very frequently. 
Um, so he had this extra like fabric here at the end. That's entirely possible, right? But I don't know how how buck wild the model designer for this went, right? Like I said, there's things that are at odds here. Like whoever made the model knew a bunch of shit, but got some stuff really weird, right? Like mate, like the brass buttons really throws me off. The lack of pattern matching in like the pockets here. That throws me off. Uh, the length of this and the cuffed trial throws me off. And I have to wonder, like I said, is it so weird because this is like a weird custom job that Franklin D. Roosevelt had personally? I don't know. It's very peculiar to me. And like I said, up here as well with the collar, the collar is off. They, it's, to me, it reads like they were trying to go for a spear point, right? But uh, I don't know. They just messed it up, right? Um, and also they, you can't help this. Like this isn't, they're not to blame for this, but the gap between his neck and the collar itself is horrendous. It's so bad. It gives him like this, the look of like a turtle, right? Like he looks turtle esque <laughs> because of it, which is no fucking good. Uh, but otherwise there's a bunch of other great details to it. Like I said, the lapels are sufficiently big. Um, they do like the rule of thirds, right? There's like rough from his like sleeve hem right here. It's, it's roughly a third, right? Which is, I believe era appropriate. That said, some people were getting into some really big lapels and shit. Actually, you know what? Check this out. Pattern matching is good on this lapel, but over here, it's kind of a fucking mess. Look at that. Yeah. Here, there was no pattern matching whatsoever. They thought someone wouldn't notice. And you know what? Maybe up till now, nobody fucking noticed. But then my fucking weird freak ass came along and noticed. <laughs> I spent half a fucking hour looking at this in-game video game fucking suit. <laughs> but like I said, there are really cool things that they have going on. Like I said, although these are brass, I think it's cool that they're like, there's a three button configuration on a sleeve. Uh, the sort of shirt cuff just peeking out underneath the uh, the end of the jacket sleeve. Very fucking good. Excellent shit. It seems like, it's hard to tell here, but it very much seems like the length of his jacket is 100% appropriate. Uh, actually, I would say a lot of contemporary jackets on... Um, on anyone who decides to wear them, but I think this maybe only applies to like um, anyone who's masculine presenting, right? But I think generally tend to wear them way too short, right? Way too short. There, you have some some room to fudge it. Like it's not precise art. Like I said, if you ball up your hands, you should just about be able to rub the end of the jacket if you're standing upright. Um, but a lot of people these days wear way too short. Right. And uh, uh, I don't care for that. I don't care for that. But here, it looks good. It looks good. There's some wrinkles and polling and stuff, which I think is fine. Um, once again, because of the neck situation, right? Because of how this falls, it looks like the shoulders of his jacket are way too big, right? It looks like the shoulders of his jacket come out way too far for the rest of them. It's hard to say. Like, if I block off his head does it look right i don't know it kind of does it kind of does but you really run into issues like i said and this is this is probably one of the more important parts of it is with the shirt collar and it's popping off of his neck like that and how oddly shapen what i presume to be spear point a spear point collar is right and how it doesn't sort of touch the lapel of the jacket that's really rough Right, and that's like one of the first parts that you would notice of it, and why it looks a little weird, you know. But at the same time, there's other really cool details here, like the tie dimple. It very much looks like a foreign hand knot. Super duper cool shit, right? The lapels, sort of having the extra embroidery around your buttonhole. That's really cool. I don't know. I'm of two minds about it. what I would love to do is like have him knocked on his ass and see if they bothered to do like um, a leather outsole 
on a shoe, <laughs> right? One of the wild details I noticed in the Fortnite skin for Alan Wake, I posted on Twitter about this. Motherfucker, fucking epic. Whoever designed Alan Wake's, um, his, as he appears in Alan Wake 2, his, his, like, suit in Fortnite, you can't see it in his actual game because of how the camera's, like, third person over the shoulder. You never see the soles of his shoes. But my god, when you jump out of the bus in Fortnite, you can see motherfuckers rocking like a day-night outsole on a shoe, which is wild to me. It is. It looks exactly like a day-night outsole, right? And it's amazing that they were even, even able to do it because I feel like maybe the look of it would be proprietary or something. I don't know, but really wild. Uh, and like I said, there's no collar gap back here. Like, look at that. That shit's fucking clean right there. Sort of top left intersection at our makeshift crosshair that shit is fucking clean there's no collar gap there right and from here you wouldn't even be able to tell from the back right there is very little in the way of space between his shirt collar and his neck but you come around here at the side oh what happened no down here oh no what happened it's too there's too much there's too much oh it's very very close to being perfect right there's just a few weird weird details and like i said some of them may be unique to fdr himself who like i said i'm i'm like 90 percent sure uh he ran into like like i said like physical disability issues uh later in his life right and some of this like particularly in the pants may be affectations of that and stuff that he personally did and whoever did the model was just copying that right but the wildest thing, I think, um, is the shirt collar, right? Like I said, fucking, in fact, I will do it after this, after I get done recording this shit. I'm going to look at a picture, look for pictures of this guy. I bet you he's wearing fucking spear point collars. And I bet you when he is sitting down, I bet there's a ton of pictures of him sitting down. Um, but even standing in a, and all that, well, uh, ideally when he's standing. But I bet he had it to where when he's sitting down, because like I said, he had physical disabilities to where he would be sitting down. Um, I bet his collar point game is on fucking point, right? And it is properly touching or even going underneath his jacket lapel so when he's wearing it, right? I bet you. I fucking bet you, right? I would be shocked if that is not the case. Huh. But yeah, ju just some weird extra shit. Um, I don't know how you... Like, also other parts of it that are holding it back is like obviously you want you have wrinkles and rumples in the jacket when he's standing perfectly upright which he almost is here obviously in a good jacket you wouldn't have rumples and stuff here at the elbow but your clothing system isn't dynamic enough right to have it to where it's like oh when he's standing upright it's not going to wrinkle and rumple right you can't you can't manage that you would need some really advanced cloths or clothing physics and shit to where it manages to do that shit, you know? Uh, so you just kind of have it lightly rumpled, even when the character is just standing. Because, you know, if you pull a gun or you gesture with your hand, it would look more weird if it's not already rumpled, right? And most people wouldn't notice. Normal people would not notice shit like this. And look at this here. I didn't even notice. There's like a line in the model, right? As it sort of connects between the hands. Hmm weird i wonder if it's because this is an affectation for when they use the same engine for fallout 5 or whatever right because this is exactly where your pit boy would go <laughs> right am i am i wrong am i fucking wrong anyway um wow i i think that's that's it <laughs> I think that's it. Uh, wow, holy shit. Didn't, didn't expect to talk about all this in a Starfield video. Bet you didn't expect me to talk about either. Well, that's just the kind of fucking service you get on this fucking weird freak ass of a channel on YouTube, huh? Hope you enjoyed that, gentle viewer. <laughs> Look forward to more uh, in the future whenever we run into more shit like this. Whenever we eventually play Fallout. Mm. Lot in there. We'll talk about some too. <laughs> Probably won't be as much as this though, because I don't know. This is a little wild, especially what well, with him being president during the 30s and 40s. Like I said, golden age of menswear. Uh, just some weird stuff. And why, if you if you looked at his outfit, 
and you played this or you were just watching me play and you're like there's something weird going on up here there is there 100 percent is it's the collar situation should right start now it the collar what? situation is weird Genghis and the renegades oh yes they're still missing so many the pragmatists are not about violence if we attack unprovoked are one of the renegades Genghis Khan? I've, <laughs> it must be. But you right? can't trust him. I've known Genghis, many versions of him. You think I don't know that. But we tread a moral path, an admirable one. <sighs> one that'll get us killed. The renegades will use any means to escape. I've us. never known anyone else in the entire world whose name was Genghis. <laughs> right? Except for this one guy. <laughs> <laughs> right so it's it's gotta be all right when next we come back we're in for a treat i guess until next time please take care of each other